So we're going to talk today about managing risk in programs. And as I said, I hope um, you'll find some of this challenging for the way that you uh, do your own risk management in your programs. Uh, also raise some, some new ideas for you. But I just want to, to, to assure you that the things we're sharing here are all proven concepts. They're not theoretical or academic. As you may know, I'm a practitioner. I've been uh, managing risk in projects, programs, businesses, government, charities for, I guess, just over 35 years. I started when I was really very young. Um, and uh, these ideas are things that are, are well proven, um, not just uh, academic or, or theoretical. So let's uh, give you an outline of what I want to talk about. A lot of us have experience in managing risk in projects, and there is a view that program risk management is just a development of project risk management. So I want to quickly at the beginning scupper that idea um, to look at the comparison of programs and projects, program risk and project risk, and then program and project risk management, and then spend some time looking at the aim and scope of program risk management and an approach that you might find interesting and perhaps just a little broader than what you're currently doing in your own practice. There are a few things which are still remaining that are not um, well understood or well practiced and we'll close the presentation out by just addressing some of those um, and some of the further work that still remains to be done. So program management is a hot topic. It's something that's been talked about for a long time. Um, and in fact, in uh, 1995, the CCTA, that's the government's Central Computer and Telecommunications Agency, published uh, a range of booklets about managing risk in programs whilst they were developing the PRINCE methodology. And so the first book called Managing, Management of Program Risk was published in 1995. Uh, since then, there's been a lot of interest in, in program management and program risk management and there's a number of standards and guidelines available. Um, a lot of people practice program management uh, widely across different industries and different countries, but there is still a lack of agreement or consensus amongst the main professional bodies in some of the areas that are covered by program management as compared with project management. So if we take the two main project management bodies, PMI, the Project Management Institute, and APM in the UK, the Association for Project Management, um, this is their definitions of program. And just as an illustration of the lack of consensus, we can't even agree how to spell the word. Um, so uh, the Americans spell it with just one M and the Brits will spell it with an M and an E on the end program. Uh, but you'll see here that the definition in PMI is about relating projects, sub-programs and programs, managing them together in a coordinated way to obtain benefits and control not available from managing them individually. So there's very much a, a kind of um, a, a, a broken down approach, a hierarchical approach to the view of programs uh, in, in PMI's view. Projects, sub-projects, sub-programs and programs managed in a coordinated way. APM takes a slightly different view and says that program management is a or a program is a strategic endeavor and it's about achieving beneficial change. And sure, it does include projects, but also business as usual activities. You'll immediately see there's a slight difference in the way that these two professional bodies define program. Uh, so we understand at least that a program is not a project and programs sit above projects. But in terms of the detailed definition, there's not that agreement. If we think about program management, uh, also defined by PMI at APM, you'll see the same sort of thing. PMI de defines it as applying knowledge, skills and principles to achieve the program's objectives and obtain benefits of control not available by managing the components individually. Whereas APM again talks about achieving beneficial change, it's about managing projects and business as usual activities, a slight difference. And again, the message here is that program management is not project management. There's clearly a distinction between the two, even if the professional bodies are not entirely agreed on what that distinction is. But we know that programs sit above projects and programs connect projects to strategy. Which then leads us on to the question of what is program risk management? And it's quite clear that programs are risky and that risk needs to be managed. The question is, how are we going to do that? A lot of organizations would say, well, let's start with project risk management and we'll just kind of expand it. We'll do project risk management, but in a kind of larger context. I'm not sure that's actually appropriate. And the rest of this presentation will be answering the question why that might not be the case, why that might not be suitable 
just to take our standard approach to managing risk in projects and apply it to programs. And what I want to look at is the aim and scope of program risk management, and we'll see how that differs from project risk management, and the approach that you need to adopt because of that different aim and scope. I'm not going to be talking here about tools and techniques for managing program risk in detail. We don't really have time for that. Um, but uh, hopefully, as you see the aim, scope and approach, you'll understand some of the techniques that might be appropriate. So we've seen that programs are not projects, not even big projects. Program management is not project management because programs sit above projects and relate projects to strategy. And similarly, program risk management is not the same as project risk management. So what does program risk management involve? Let's start by looking at this aim and scope and we'll see the specifics. So you'll begin to see how these are different uh, from, from managing risk in projects. So first of all, the obvious thing to say is that the aim of program risk management is to manage risk in programs. That's just tautologist, that's just obvious. If we have a definition of risk, this is based on the PMI definition of risk as an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs has a positive or negative effect on one or more objectives. And you'll see that I've got a number of X's here just before the word objectives, because by changing the type of objectives that we're interested in, we can change the type of risk that we're considering. So if we want to, defi to define project risk, a project risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it happens will affect project objectives. And we see that program risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs affects program objectives in the same way that strategic risk affects strategic objectives, personal risk affects my personal objectives, financial risk affects financial objectives and so on. So the point here is that the aim of program risk management is to manage any uncertainty that if it occurred would affect program objectives. And so immediately you'll see that that's different from our project risk management, which is focusing on project objectives. In, in scope is any risk that can affect achievement of one or more program objectives. Now, because programs sit in the middle between projects and strategy, then the scope of program risk management has a number of different directions to consider. Programs are in the middle between projects and strategy, which means that risk can come from three different directions. In this diagram, you'll see programs sitting between strategy and the components of the of the program, which are projects and maybe sub programs and business as usual activities and maybe operations as well. Programs are sitting there in the middle, which means that if we want to think about where uncertainty might arise at program level, there are uncertainties or risks that could be escalated or aggregated from the component level, things that could happen at component level with the projects and other related activities, but if they occurred would have an effect on the overall program objectives. So those will be escalated or aggregated from below. And we'll talk about how that might happen in just a moment. In the same way as programs sit below strategy, we might have delegated strategic risks, things that could happen at the strategy level for the overall business or organization, which also have an impact on achievement of program objectives. And then lastly, the other direction is at the same level as the program, we might have pure program risks, which could affect the achievement of the program as it's operating. So you'll see immediately that whereas projects are just concerned about uncertainties that could affect the project, here because we're in the middle of an organization sitting between strategy and pro program components, programs can be affected by uncertainties that come up from below down from above or in at the same level. And so you'll see that the scope is quite complex, is quite different from the more simple position that we have when we're considering project risk management. So let's have a look at these three different directions in turn. Risks that come up from below, risks that come down from above, and risks that will come in at the program level. So starting with risks from below, you've probably seen this picture of the, the mother duck uh, taking her ducklings for a walk and uh, encountering some risks that she wasn't expecting or wasn't aware of and poor ducklings. I, I think this is probably uh, photoshopped, at least I hope it is. No ducklings were harmed in the making of that slide as far as I can tell. 
But certainly it's true that there are things that can leap up, up at us at the program level from down below that could affect us. What sort of things might those be? We're looking at risks that could be escalated or aggregated from the component level. And there are four sources of uncertainty at the program level that come up at us from below from our program components. The first source is projects which form part of our program. We could have very large project risks, risks that could affect project objectives, but are so large that they also could affect achievement of our program objectives. It's just so big that it needs to be given attention and action at the program level. So large project risks can be escalated, raised up a level for attention and action. But we might also find there's a number of smaller project risks, which if they occurred together, if they related or or um, correlated, if there are dependencies between them and one happens and it makes the others happen, then we might want to aggregate those project risks together and manage them together at the higher level, at the program level. So we've got risks within a component project. We've also got the risk of the overall failure of one of our component projects. And now this is uh, introducing a concept that I hope you're familiar with, which is different from the idea of individual risks, whether they're big or related. This is considering the idea of overall project risk, not what are the risks within the project, but how risky is the project itself? And that's really a, a different subject that maybe we could talk about another time. What is the overall risk that one of my key program component projects might fail completely, not deliver the, the outcomes or the, the um, outputs that we require into the program level? So overall project risk also poses a risk at the program level. So there's three of our four sources. You'll remember that programs include other components, not just projects. And so we could also, as our fourth source, have risks from non-project components, from sub-programs, from business as usual activities, or from operations. And similarly, those lower level, smaller um, non-project risks could be escalated or aggregated for attention and action at the program level. So you'll see that uh, there's a, a number of different sources of risk that could come up at us into the program level from down below. Now, in order to, to implement this kind of um, uh, escalation and aggregation, you need to know where is the boundary of risk exposure between project level and program level if we want to talk about how big risks are so that we can escalate large project risks, we need to know at what, at what level of risk exposure a risk would require attention and action at the program level, not just at the project level. So where is that threshold between the two? And we'd also need to know how do we size a risk? How do we decide if, if, if this is a large risk or a medium sized risk or a small risk? And hopefully with both of those things, you will be familiar with the, the standard techniques for setting thresholds and sizing risks. But escalation and aggregation, I've, I've got a diagram here to show you just how that might work. Once we've set the threshold where we define the difference between risk exposure that can be dealt with at the project level and risk exposure, which is su sufficiently significant that we need to deal with it at the program level, once we've set that threshold, we can examine the risks we have in our project risk register and see if any of them need to be escalated or aggregated. Where we have risks in our project risk register, and this is a project which is a component of the program, if those risks are below the threshold, they're small risks, then we can just retain them at project level and make sure that they're managed by the project risk management process. If we have risks in our project risk register where the impact is large, and they breach that threshold, then those large project risks need to be escalated to program level for attention and action. So we directly escalate them up, up in the organization for the program management team to take care of. So that's how escalation works if the impact breaches the project program risk threshold. What about aggregation? What we do with aggregation is we examine risks in the project risk register to see if they're related and if they're related, then we might need to consider them combined and look at their combined impact at the program level. And if we find that a number of smaller risks at the project level breach the project program risk threshold, then we would aggregate that combination of risks to be addressed at the program level. 
And in order to do that, we need to know what are the conditions by which we might relate together project risks. And there's a number of ways we might do that. We might look at risks that have a common source and we could use the risk breakdown structure to classify risks by their source, group together risks that have a common source, and then see if the impact of those grouped risks would be sufficient to, be, to uh, require attention at the programme level. Or we could re relate them together by the effect. If we have a number of smaller risks at project level that could affect the same part of the project or the same part of the programme or the same part of the organisation, then we might want to aggregate and escalate those to the programme level. And we might use the work breakdown structure or product breakdown structure um, to, to uh, relate risks together in that way. Or we might think about impact types. If you have a number of small program, uh, sorry, small project level risks that maybe have an impact on reputation or have an impact on safety or have an impact on profitability, each one on its own might not be sufficient to require program level attention. But if we link them together because they're related by the type of impact, then again, we might want to deal with them at the program level. So you'll see that escalating is for large risks, aggregating is for related risks. To make this work, we have to be able to understand the threshold between projects and programs. What is the level of risk exposure at which we require attention and action at program level? And we also need to be able to size the risks in the standard way, thinking about probability and impact or likelihood and, and consequence. So you'll see that escalating, es escalating and aggregating risks from below is a fairly simple technique once you can uh, sort out the thresholds and the sizing. So let's move on to think about, um, oh sorry, it's just here's a, here's a picture of the same sort of thing. So the white risks are all the risks that are retained at project level. The red ones are the ones which are raised to program level for attention and action, either by being sufficiently large or by being related together that they require somebody to look at at the next level up. The yellow risk is just a, an indication, a reminder that sometimes you get risks at the project level which are so big that they need to be escalated not to the program level, not to the portfolio level, but to the strategy level. And if we have existential risks or risks which are so significant to the overall mission of the organisation, then those need to be bypassed right to the top. It doesn't happen very often, but we do need to be aware of it. So those are the risks that can, can come up from below to affect our organisation at the programme level. If they're sufficiently large or if they're aggregated or related together, then we need to deal with them there. What about risks from above? Here we are quite simply uh, you know, sitting in our programme office, enjoying managing the programme, completely unaware that somebody upstairs in the organisation at the strategic level is doing something that could really ruin our day. And we need to be aware of these sorts of risks that could be literally dropped on us in the organisation. We're talking about delegation of risks from the strategic level. The principle is the same as it is from uh, raising risks up from below, escalating risks from project level. Delegating risks from the strategic level is required if we have risks that are strategic, but they could affect achievement of the programme objectives directly, or they require action and ownership by the programme level. So it's attention and action again. And again, to make this work, we need to understand that risk threshold. What is the level of risk impact above which we require strategic attention and strategic risk management? below which we can safely delegate a risk. Even, if, even though it's a strategic risk, we can delegate it below that risk threshold for attention and action at the program level. And if we're doing that, it's really important that we have clear communication, that we understand what the risk is, where it came from, who identified it, what the uh, probability and likelihood is, what the potential impacts are, and why it's being delegated to us at the program level. And we need to have clear acceptance and a sort of a, a formal handshake that says, yes, I will take care of this risk on your behalf. And the people at strategic level need to make sure that they're delegating the responsibility for managing the risk without abdicating, without just taking their hands off and saying, I've thrown it over the wall. It's down to you. You take care of it and don't tell me. So it's really important that we have proper communication as we pass risks uh, up and down the organisation.
program managers can be stuck in the middle. It's quite an uncomfortable place sometimes where risks are coming up at you from below, dropping on you from above. And there you are in the middle trying to catch all these things whilst you're managing your program. So it is really important that we have that clear communication and that understanding that we're accepting risk to manage it on behalf of those above us or those below us in the hierarchy. But there are actually risks that could, that could affect us at the same level, the level that we're progressing in the program. And if we're not paying attention to where those risks are coming from, then we could have a very untidy and unpleasant outcome. Program risks are those which affect us at the level of the program, the direct program risks themselves, not escalated or aggregated from below and not delegated from above. These are risks that arise within the program level, remembering that like all risks, that includes both risks that could potentially harm us and risks that could potentially help us, threats and opportunities, and across all different types of risk, uh, as we would see in a risk breakdown structure, management risks, commercial risks, technical risks, external risks. The full range of the risk breakdown structure can also affect us at program level. So we need to be looking broadly at the different types of risks. But what we're looking for is risks that are, uh, arise from interfaces between the components. This is a very fruitful source of risk, sadly, uh, when we're thinking about how to prioritize our program components. Uh, maybe the priorities change unexpectedly for different reasons. We might have common resources that are required between different program components and the, the handoff of, of key resources between components might be uncertain or might uh, cause uh, um, ripple effects through the program that we're not aware of, dependencies, constraints, and so on. So the, the way that our programs relate together, can, uh, our program components relate together, can cause uncertainty in the program. But similarly, there are what we might call pure program risks, which are to do with our management of the program, how we execute the program components as a, as a complete program. And those sorts of things need careful attention. So we've seen that there are three different directions where, where um, risk arises at program level. We have risk arising from below, we have risk being dropped on us from above, and risks which can affect us directly at the program level. And because that is more complex than the situation we find in projects, we need a different approach to manage the risks that, that face us, the risks that, that could affect us at the program level. We can't just take project risk management and do it at a, at a higher level in the organization. So what's the approach that we could use to manage risk at program level that will cope with risks that are escalated and aggregated from below, risks that are delegated from above, and risks that come at us at the level of the program itself. I'd like to suggest to you a two-part approach. Um, and this two-part approach arises from the idea which I mentioned a moment ago, which is the difference between overall risk and individual risks. Now, the difference between risk and risks is not just singular and plural. Conceptually, there is a difference between individual uncertainties, which if they occurred will have an effect on our objectives, and the overall riskiness of our enterprise, of our program in this case. So the overall riskiness of our program is more than the sum of the individual risks within the program. It also includes other sources of uncertainty which could affect achievement of, of our objectives. And this idea of the distinction between overall risk and individual risks is something which I guess we've been talking about for the last maybe 10 or 12 years, maybe 15. Um, it's something which has been around for a while. It's been, for example, in the, the PMI PMBOK guide for, let's see, since 2004. Uh, it's been mentioned in the uh, APM risk management guidelines as well for about the same, same length of time. So we need to recognize that there are overall risks to do with the riskiness of the program. And then within the program, there are individual risks that need to be managed. And they require a different approach, a twofold approach. I'd like to suggest what I call implicit risk management as a way of dealing with overall program risk and explicit risk management as a way of dealing with the individual risks within the program. We might talk about the risk of the program and the risks in the program. So how might this two-fold or two-level approach work? What's implicit risk management? Implicit risk management at program level is where we consider the structure of the program 
as a way of managing how risky that program is as a whole. So we're addressing overall program risk and we do it in two ways. One is when we're building the program and deciding which components will go into the program, we want to select a set of components, that's programs, uh, sub-programs, projects, business as usual activities, maybe operations. We want to choose a set of components which gives us an acceptable level of risk exposure as well as giving us, giving us the required level of return. And balancing return with risk exposure is something called risk efficiency. When we're building our program, we want to have a risk efficient program. And that's something which uh, it requires some thought, it requires some, some modeling, it requires some, uh, s some attention to make sure that we get it right. Obviously, we're going to do that when we first build the program. We're going to choose a set of, of components, some of which will be low risk, low, <clears throat> low risk, low return, some of which will be high risk, high return, medium risk, high return, medium risk, low return, balancing those returns with the risk exposure so that overall the riskiness of the whole program is within our acceptable level while still allowing us to achieve the required return. To do this, we need to know how much risk is too much risk for the program. What is our organizational risk threshold? And we also need to know how risky is each component that we're thinking about putting into the program. So we have to have a way of evaluating risk exposure of different components in a consistent way. We're comparing projects, sub-programs, business as usual activities, and being able to say, well, on a consistent basis using the same measure, how risky are each of these elements so that when we build them into a consistent program, we can be risk efficient to achieve the required return within an acceptable level of risk exposure. So we need to know what that acceptable level is, and we need to be able to um, assess the risk exposure of each component on a consistent basis. And then what we do once we've built the program and we're running it, we need to keep an eye on risk efficiency. We need to monitor risk efficiency as we run the program. We need to make sure that we are reviewing how risky each program component is and what that is doing to the overall riskiness of the program as a whole as the program is being executed. And if necessary, we would manage that overall riskiness of the project by changing the component mix. There might be some elements of the program that we decide to discontinue or to de-scope or to delay in order to change the overall risk exposure of the project. And we're doing that by measuring and monitoring the risk efficiency of the overall program, the balance of risk and return, so that we stay below the risk efficient threshold and we maintain the level of return that we're required to, to deliver. So component selection has two levels. One is as we build the program initially and the other as, is as we run the program, modifying that, that component mix in order to stay below the, the threshold. So the first way we can do implicit risk management is nothing to do with risk identification, assessment and, and all those things. It's about the way that we build the overall program, the components that we choose to be part of our program. But what about the execution of the pro program itself? That's building the program and maintaining the right mix of components. When we're executing the program, we can execute it in a way which allows us to manage the overall riskiness of that program as we go along. And we do that using the standard program management technique of chunking or dividing our delivery into elements of, of um, sub-elements of functionality. So we're delivering parts of the program as we go through the, the program itself. We decouple the tranches or the, or the chunks to make sure that each element of the program is stable in itself. And then we, we execute the pro program as a cycle. We go through a level of planning, executing and delivering something then reviewing, planning, executing and delivering something. And that allows us to build in flexibility and resilience into our program so that future tranches or future chunks can be managed and planned to respond to the level of risk exposure that we have now. So the idea is that we build the program initially with a set of components that gives us a risk efficient mix. We then start to manage the program. As we go through, we divide it into chunks that we're delivering. As each chunk is delivered, then we can review again the level of risk exposure, see if we're getting the required level of return, 
If not, then we can start to change the component mix and plan the way that we chunk the program in the future in order to, re to, to remain within our risk efficient threshold. So implicit program risk management is something that a lot of people do kind of at gut level without really thinking about it. In my view, it should be a, a, a visible formal way of managing risk in the program, uh, of thinking about what's in this program, how risky does it make the program, is that acceptable, and if not, what are we going to do about it? That's a key part of program management, of managing the risks within the program, the riskiness of the program as a whole. When it comes to explicit risk management of programs, that's a bit more simple. That's something that you will be quite familiar with. That's a structured process through the program lifecycle, which addresses individual risks, uncertainties within the program that if they occurred, could affect achievement of our objectives. It's not about the overall riskiness of the program itself. It's about individual things that may or may not occur within the program, which if they did occur, would affect our ability to achieve our objectives. And here the program risk process is very similar to the project risk management process. Launching the, uh, the, the process at the beginning of the program and at key milestones, identifying and assessing risks, planning and implementing responses, reviewing our risk exposure and updating our plans, and then at key points within the program, stopping to identify and learn lessons for the future. Lessons for the future of this program, but also lessons for future programs. So there's a standard kind of process which you should be familiar with, which is the explicit or open or formal uh, management of risks within the program. So to summarize what I've just said, oh, and it said at the bottom, there's similar tools and techniques. The, the way that we do this explicit program risk management is very similar to the tools and techniques that we would use within projects. So here's just a diagram to summarize what I have said about these two levels of risk management within programs. We manage the riskiness of the overall riskiness of the program implicitly by considering the structure and scope and the content and context of the program as a whole, maintaining risk efficiency. Explicit risk management is using a typical risk management process to address not the overall riskiness, but the individual risks within the program. And with these two levels, then we can tackle both the things that come at, at us from above and below, and also the risks at the level of the program itself. So let me summarize. Hopefully this has been interesting. Hopefully it's challenged some of the ways you think about managing risk on your programs. If you want to make this work, it's quite well established. The techniques are quite well understood. There are a few things you might find as challenges that you need to think about and address before you can implement this properly. So let me suggest these issues that you might need to think about in order to get implicit, explicit risk management of your programs working. The first thing is when we're thinking about escalating and delegating, escalating and aggregating risks from below and delegating risks from above, you do need to understand the risk thresholds within your organization. What level of risk exposure can we safely leave risks below to be managed at, program, at project or component level? What level of risk exposure is above our pay grade, higher than the program and needs to be dealt with strategically at the whole business level? And where are we between those two thresholds at the level of risk exposure that requires attention and action at the program level? If we don't understand those thresholds and have them explicitly um, uh, uh, measurably stated uh, in our organization, then we won't know whether we should be accepting risks from below or above because we don't know if they're in our area of, of, of responsibility. So we do need to know how to define risk thresholds within the organization. They're like levels of authority, that, that similar sort of thing, but for risk. Secondly, we need to understand how to implement risk efficiency. Risk efficiency has been around for a very long time, but to actually do it in practice, balancing risk and reward within an organization to maintain a, a program component mix, a portfolio of, of elements within your program, which deliver the required return whilst staying within a level of, of risk, which is acceptable. That needs some thought. There are some challenges in, in how we might do that. And you need to, to be able to do that in order, to, in order to do the implicit risk management that we've talked about. One of the key things when we're managing risk in programs is to avoid the project mindset. 
which is why I started where I did in this presentation to remind you that programs are not big projects and program management is not project management at a higher level and pro program risk is not the same as project risk. We can't just take our project mindset and apply it into programs. It's a different level of authority. It's a different level of responsibility. It's a different mindset, a different way of thinking and behaving. So we need to make sure if we're working at program level that we give that the level of attention. We learn how to be good program managers, not just taking the project mindset and doing it at a higher level. For program risk management, it's important that it's integrated into the overall way that we manage the program. The interface between program risk management and wider program management needs attention. We need to be careful about that. It's very easy for the risk people to be hived off into a silo, to be doing the kind of risk thing on the side. You'll see, particularly with the implicit risk management that we talked about, we really need to integrate the way that we manage risk with the overall management of the program. So as a summary, programs are not projects. Programs are risky and we need to manage that risk. But what we've got is a multi-level approach, managing risk implicitly through the structure and scope and the context and the content of the program itself, and managing risk explicitly through a formal risk management process that deals with individual risks within the program. If we take those two things together, then there's a good chance that we'll manage the risks that could affect us at program level effectively and maximize our chances of achieving our program objectives.